Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop and channels and creating sort of water ripple effects like this. Now, I probably will not be able to create exactly the same as that by the end of this video, but I'm going to show you the approach that you may be able to create similar sort of things. So first thing to do, let's revert it back to the original image. So once you've got that, what you can need to do is the channels panel. That's the key one here, channels. And you've got channels here, and you can find that via window and channels. For the channels, you can see you've got red, green, and blue. So if you want to, you can just select red, select green, select blue, and you can work in those channels and apply all various things. But in this case, what I want to do is add another channel. I'm just going to quickly go over here, and there's a right side menu here. Just click there, and you've got new channel option. So new channel, new channel. What I'm going to go for is actually selected areas. Doesn't particularly matter. I'm just going to go with selected areas in this case, and click OK. So then, weirdly, doesn't seem to actually allow you to do anything. You've got it here selected, but you can't do anything. Now, I've always found that you can simply just go up here and click back down there again, and then you can work with it. So it seems a bit of an odd feature that. However, once you've got it, what I always generally do is use a gradient. And I've just got a gradient over here. You can select, of course, any number of gradients, a whole vast number of gradients. You can find many on the Graphic Extras website, graphicextras.com. There's lots of gradients there. But also, Photoshop comes with lots of gradients as well. And I'm using the radio option and difference. I always love difference. So just apply. And this is being applied to the alpha channel. And you can create all kinds of weird designs and this is a great start point for you you can always undo if you don't want particularly that design and you can see there it's in the alpha channel none of the other channels are touched so you can go back now to rgb and it looks like nothing has changed nothing's happened but now you've got this alpha channel so what you can do you can always go to select and down here load selection there's quite a few different commands you can do of course other things you can modify it in numerous ways but load selection that's the first one and by default, goes to this channel, layer one transparency. You don't want that one. What you want is alpha one. So you've got alpha one there. Click OK. And there you've got, so you've got this alpha, this selection applied based on this alpha channel. What I generally do is I just go and invert it. I don't always want it on that one. I think, you know what, it's better the other way. It doesn't matter. You can obviously work out and see which one you like yourself. Well, once you've done that, you can copy and paste it. So edit, and you can go over here, and obviously you can do control C, control V, etc. but copy. Now you don't have to have a section anymore, I'm just gonna remove that, and then paste it. So edit and paste, and it looks again, very little has changed. In fact, the only difference is if you go to window, and you've got layers, you'll see you've got a layer, and it's very little there. You're talking very, very subtle, but that's what you want. So what I want. So what I'm going to do, then I'm going to go to a layer and a layer style and a bevel emboss. And straight away you can see you've got your lovely design there, bevel emboss. You can go for emboss option. You can vary it, just try it. In a boss, you can maybe start out with a sort of very slight subtle ripples. You can just try them. Which one do you prefer? Then you can modify the depth. So you can increase the depth. And you just see you know, what you like, what you think looks really nice. And you can modify the angle as well. So you can move it around. You can see also straight away. But what I like to do is go for linear dodge, one of those ones. I mean, there's a couple, obviously many, there's a couple others that actually work quite nicely, but I quite like the linear dodge option there. And also select one of these. And you can see you can select different ones there. And I quite like that one. It gives a lot of different sort of ripples all the way through this and once you've done that click OK now you could at that point you could finish perfectly reasonable it's a perfectly decent picture but of course you can of course extend it change it a bit more you can add some more so what I'm going to do I'm just going to flatten this one I'm not sure. so I'm just going to flatten it you don't have to you don't have to flatten it but I've just gone to a layer and flatten image, so it's all become part of the thing. But if you wanted to just keep it as separate layers, perfectly reasonable as well. I'm just gonna do that. What you can then do is you can now go to the alpha channel again, just go down here, and you can always clear it. So you can always say edit and fill, 
I'm not going to be passing. I'm just going to go and say white. So it's clear. So you've got no alpha channel now. But you can, of course, go over here to the grains using exactly the same as before. So just go with that and just apply additional designs added on top. And you can create a couple of different designs like that. And if you're not happy again, always undo and just apply it like that. And you think, you know what? I like that now. Again, go back to RGB. What you can do, select and equals load selection again. So with the load selection, select that. And again, this time, luckily it's got alpha there. So with alpha there, click OK. And again, you've got that. And again, if you want to, you can always select an inverse. You can just try it, see which ones you like. Again, <clears throat> if it edit and, so I've got a slight throat problem, and paste, edit, copy and paste. So you've got it pasted back in again. And again, what you can do, go over to my favorite layer, layer style, and bevel emboss. And you can see what you're getting is added complexity to design. Obviously you're adding multiple alpha channels, different sort of whole range of different designs can be created from this. And obviously to actually exactly create it, same as before, would be very tricky. It would take a bit of time to exactly match it. Now, of course, what you could do is you could record all this as an action. That would be a great way. And then it could just obviously reproduce it very quickly. But I, I'm not doing that. And you can mess around with this as well, the angles. It's got light going different different directions. It's all over the place. So the, it doesn't have to be the same direction. That just creates quite a, and you can modify the size. Again, linear dodge. And you can change colors and things if you want. Okay, why not have any effect? Depends on the blending mode, whether it's uh, changing the color makes any difference to the highlight. And you can also change those as well. You can say you don't have to keep it always on the same one. And you can change soften, maybe not. Depth. I think that looks quite nice. And again, inner bevel, go for boss. Try it. And then you can see, actually, I quite like that as well. That's really intense. So that's getting sort of more of plastic film, actually, in, in many ways. Than, however, let's just go with that. Click OK. So you got that. Now, what you can also do, you go over here to Alpha 1. And you can go to over here and go to filter. And you've got a variety of filters. Not every single filter is available. So some filters are just not available. But you can go say like distort. And let's see what I like. Good old twirl. Twirl is a good one. That's quite nice for, so you've got twirl there. Use that. And again, always go back to the RGB. And again, now you can probably go, see so you can go too far. You actually get to the point where you just don't see the image. And that's maybe the best thing to actually use it as layers, because you can always remove layers. Whereas if you've done what I've done, some, you know, you end up sort of freezing it by flattening the image. So if you flatten the image, that's it. You can't do any more. So again, select, load selection. And again, this time it's got the twirl in it. So you've got alpha there. Click OK. And you can see the design there. Now, I don't have to invert. I'm just going to go with what I've got here. Again. Edit and copy and paste. So it's pasted there. And again, what you can do, layer, layer style and bevel and boss. You can see the effect. Now it does, as I say, gets to a point where you really start to lose the actual design. So you maybe push it too far. But you can also apply, of course, like wave. Wave's a great, great filter for creating nice water effects as well. And if you don't, you can actually go back. So let's just go back. Let's just go back to it before we do that with the alpha channel, you can always add a wave as well. So if you want to create a nice water ripple one, I always think that that's quite a nice one. So distort and wave, you can see there the, the wavy effect. You can modify all these different settings. I think personally, just keep it fairly low, push it too much and sometimes you end up with a not so great image. Click OK and you've got that. That can be used as selection as well. So just go to RGB and select Load selection, okay. Alpha channel, you've got the alpha channel there. Copy and paste, edit, and copy, edit, paste. And then go to layer, layer style, and bevel and boss. And this is just gonna be the final bit, otherwise it just gets ridiculous. You just keep adding more and more ripples. You can make really complex designs by using this approach. And again, you can modify and soften there. Don't have to go with that, you can go maybe chisel. Maybe not 
smooth. And again, varies that if you want. And you can see the effect there by just going, I think it actually works best when you've got this contour that's a gloss contour, we've got multiple, and you can always edit that. So you can, if you want to, you can always tweak it, maybe add a couple more, if it were reasonable. And once you've done that, okay, you can modify the light direction if you want. Just see what you like, what you think that works best. You think, you know, that looks great. Maybe not. Yep. Now, click OK. And you can see, actually, now, of course, the image is virtually completely lost. But you can see the sort of ripple water effect that's generated here. Once you've done this, of course, what you can do, you can add some colour to it as well. Numerous ways to do it. Maybe go over here to the layers, add some colour that way. Also, maybe go to image menu. Just use adjustments here. But another option, make it non-destructive, will be just go to a layer and new adjustment layer. And there's a whole variety, obviously, brightness, contrast, etc. Hue saturation, pretty reasonable one, but color look up. That's always a favorite of mine. So color look up, click OK. And then we've got properties. That's window and properties there. And you've got a whole range of ones. Maybe futuristic bleak. Hmm, that looks quite nice. Maybe horror blue. That's always a nice one. Yes, that looks pretty good. That's a great, nice looking water. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, Clip Studio Paint, Critter, and many other applications as well. Also, if you've got any comments, anything I did wrong, maybe things that I didn't do in the right way, or maybe didn't explain well enough or went too fast, please put in the comments. Always appreciated with that. So I'm always happy to answer some questions, hopefully to a certain point, obviously. I also a dislike or like, always appreciated as well. Thank you much.